Do you know 11,500,000 of the UK population do not have more than 100 pounds savings in their account? That is equivalent to the whole Belgium population. Think about that. 39% of the population do not know how to manage their finances. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I was able to beat that rat race to come out of that statistics and become financially free. Hey guys, it's Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development, and how to gain financial freedom. I'm gonna share with you what is financial freedom and what does financial freedom means and how you can determine what figure can get you financially free. And I'm also gonna share with you the goals I take, how I, was, how I was able to understand how much I need to be financially free, as well as what do I need to do to become financially independent. Before we get to that, I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to my channel. The channel is growing immensely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it so much. I wouldn't have sat here today talking to you if that channel has not grown. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're new to this channel, smash the subscribe button now because I'll be sharing actionable as well as valuable content. And I've got so many people lined up to inspire you to share the journey on how they become financially free and become an amazing entrepreneur. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm gonna share with you step by step how I was able to gain financial freedom before the age 30. I will share with you what financial freedom means, how are you able to achieve financial freedom and the steps you need to take to achieve the goals to get you to become financially free. You see, just over eight years ago, I was an accountant working ridiculously long hours. I was in a job where I was undervalued, underappreciated, going nowhere. I decided to take the leap of faith, to take my finances into my own hands instead of relying on my employers. It wasn't always easy because obviously I've got so many noises around me. I have to go and watch football. I have subscriptions to pay for. I have a car to pay for and, I've, and, and I was overwhelmed with so many expenses. So I was thinking that is impossible. I could not just do that. I've seen people on social media living all this amazing life thinking, how did they do this? Only for me to implement what I'm about to share with you, which just helped me transform my life from being a dead broke accountant to financially free. So let's get to it now. You see, in order for me to be able to move from getting paid paycheck to paycheck, I had to have a sense of realization, understanding how long do I have to live this way for waiting to get paid in order for me to be able to do anything. And at that time, obviously, I was exchanging time for money. So it wasn't really something that I wanted to do when that sort of realization kicked in. But what really, really get me going is this. It's one Sunday morning, I woke up hearing this shouting in the market. I used to live in a marketplace where they do a Sunday market every Sunday. I had this choppy noise coming around me, but I woke up. I did not wake up thinking about the noise or, or the, the disturbance. I had a striking thought that comes to me asking me, what if I got ill? What if I got run by a bus? What if something happened to my children? What if, if my mom got ill? Right? I realized my company will look after me maybe for a month or maybe a couple of months if I'm lucky and then I am, on, I am on my own. That was the day I realized I was only making money when I work and the money I was making was only enough to live by. So from that day, that hour, that minute, that second, I decided to take my finances into my own hands instead of relying on my employer. Yes, obviously it wasn't always easy because you've got all this family commitment, all these bills going, but I decided to take that faith. And, and what I'm gonna share with you now is what the steps I take to be able to achieve that financial freedom so that you could, you could kind of replicate the same process to get you to become financially free by age 30. If you're already 30 or you're going past 30, set yourself a target, maybe to become financially free age 40, 50, or perhaps 60. Here's the thing, in order for you to get from where you are to where you want to go, you need to understand where you are in the first place. Because here's the thing, if you don't know where you are, you wouldn't know where you want to go. So first thing I did basically is to look where I am physically, morally, 
financially and emotionally. So I, I, I had to take stock of what I am or who I am or what I am currently doing. So at that time, I was working as an accountant. I was getting paid about £1,700. I lived in a shared house. And obviously, I spent most of my time watching football or hanging around with friends. So I, I looked into that. I then kind of think about what can I do to actually get me to escape from that rat race to become financially free and ultimately become financially independent. And I also look into trying to visualize where I see myself in the next two, three, four, and five years. So the first thing I did is this. Let's get to the board. So the first thing I did was to, was to look at the people I surround myself with. Right, I looked at the people that like I'm surrounding myself with. I looked at most of them like to go out clubbing. Some of them like to go on football. Some of them like to hang around in the in the city centre and uh, not doing anything, or maybe going shopping, buying expensive stuff. So I realised then at that point, if I was to continue with these people. I will not be able to get to where I want to go. So what I did at that point is to start reducing the time I spent with these people. If I used to spend with them maybe the whole weekend, I start reducing that to like maybe one day um, in a weekend. And then I reduced it to like hours, I reduced it to minutes, and then I cut them away from me. The first thing I did is to separate myself from anybody that doesn't add value to me, okay? So I separate myself from those people. So I separate myself. So from those people, there were two types of people. The people that like to spend money, buying so many stuff, and I had people, part of that group that criticized me. So what do I mean by that? They always criticize what I do. Whenever I want to do something like, oh, you're not capable of doing it, right? This is not for you. This is not, this is not for that type of person. And, uh, and they always criticize whatever I do. So I took those people off my life. And the third type of person I took out of my life is the person that always complain. I have some friends that always complain about the news, about the weather, about this. They're always bitching and moaning all the time. So I try to segregate myself out of these people in order to try to focus on my vision and the mission that I, that I was about to execute. So once I've done that, I then looked at creating a vision board. What do I mean by vision board? Is to visualize myself to understand where I want to be in the next year, couple of years, two years, three years, and up to five years from that day, I decided to take stock of what I was doing. So basically what I did at that time is to have a vision board. Okay, so what, what could that be for you? Your, your vision board could be maybe to be able to earn maybe 10, 15,000 a month, 20,000 a month, maybe 100,000, maybe 400,000 pounds for you, for whatever that is for you. But, but for me, because I was just starting out, my vision was to be able to make enough money passively that is more than my expenses. So I looked into that. I realized for the first year, one to two years, my target was to be able to earn more than or equal to my living cost. So what that does then, they basically, that then brings me here. So I take into account how much was my rent? How much am I paying rent to my landlord? So at that point, my rent was 600 pounds. Okay, I look at food. How much do I, in, how much do I spend? in my feeding, buy my groceries and all that sort of thing. So I realized it was 400 pounds. But what does this do for me basically is to understand how much I'm spending in food and then obviously my other expense by, by looking after my extended family members and all the rest of it was about 500 pounds. So I then know 
in order to be financially free, I need to be able to earn at least £1,500 a month passively without actively working in my workplace. And I now know by doing that, I've only got £200 left end of the month because obviously I was getting paid £1,700 net and my expenses was about £1,500. So whilst I was doing these calculations here, I did something very important which I would advise you to do is to go through my bank statement to understand what sort of expenses am, am I making. I realized I have Amazon Prime that I wasn't using. I had Netflix I wasn't using. I've got Sky. I hardly watch football. Whenever I watch football, halfway, 45 minutes, I'm do I've dozed up. I, I was sleeping. I had so many stuff that I was paying for that I wasn't using. So what I did basically is to reduce cancel, eliminate anything in that, on that statement that wasn't bringing me any money, like the subscriptions, like all this stuff that I've, I, have, I have registered for that I've never used. I eliminate all that. That then takes me to about 1,200 pounds. So I was able to save actually 300 pounds by just looking at my finances. Because what I also realized, I was spending so much in food that I wasn't even eating. Right, so I reduced that, that expense as well. So once I've done that, then I know my target to be financially free is 1,200 pounds. But I didn't visualize myself. So suppose I am not living in a shared house. If I was to go and rent one bedroom flat, for example, how much will that one bedroom flat cost me? Then I realized one bedroom flat would cost me about 800 pounds, which is, about 200 pounds more than the 600 pounds that I was paying. So then I added the 200 pounds here. And then I said to myself, if I was to pay the bills and all the rest of the things, that would cost me about 300 pounds. So I was at 1,400, right? So I added the 300 pounds. That takes me to my 1,700 pounds, okay? So now I know in order for me to become financially free, I need to be making at least 1,700 pounds without trading my hours for money that will release me from doing that ridiculous long hours at work and invest that time in me. So I looked at so many stuff. I looked at cryptos. I looked at Forex, I looked at trading online, and I looked at property. But properties really re resonate with me. Why? Because when I looked at property, it makes me money in two ways. One, basically there's capital appreciation. Second, I can rent the property and make a residual income every single month. But the problem I had at that point was, I was told I need a ridiculous amount of money. Some people told me I need 200,000, some tell me 100,000, some tell me 50,000, some even told me 40,000 pounds. And I looked at my work, I realized how long it would take me to save 200 pounds to get 50,000 pounds to start my investment journey. So I, I kind of put property aside at that point. I'm thinking, you know what, I might as well continue working, get my CMA qualification, become a chartered accountant, and hopefully I'll be able to save money that way. But I realized that is not sustainable. So I keep doing my research, keep learning about property, understanding how do I start with little to none of my own money. And then I bump into a strategy called rent to rent. So what is that rent to rent? Rent to rent is the process by which you, the investor, will see a property, secure that property, rent it from a landlord and it subsequently rent it out on a room by room basis. For me, when I heard about that strategy, I was thinking, what? You, are you allowed to rent a property and sublet it? For me, it sound illegal. So I had to go and investigate to learn whether this is actually the case. I continue watching the videos, continue learning. I realized that like, people are doing it. So it's actually legal. So what I then did at that point is to say, now I know what my financial freedom figure was and I, I now know I don't need this ridiculous amount of money that they were asking for for me to start my investment journey. So I know I need a minimum of £5,000 to get my investment going. So not £50,000, that's £5,000. That's literally crazy out of my mind when, when I actually heard that. So now I know I need £1,700 to be financially free and I now know I can use actually 5,000 pounds to get my investment going 
it was music to my ears. I said, okay, fine. So if I was to go into property today, secure a property, right? How many property would I need to be able to get to become financially free? So I looked into the market. I realized I may be able to rent a six bedroom house for 3000 pounds. Okay, and I estimate my, my expenses to pay the landlord, the rent, the um, light and heat and all the expenses that goes with the property. That goes, that, need, that, that would be about £2,500. So if you minus that, that would have given me a net profit of £500. And that £500 is the same amount these people online are saying you're likely to make. They were saying 500 pounds plus, I'm making 600, 700, 800 pounds, but I use the 500 pounds. So I said to myself then, in order for me to be able to actually make 1,700 pounds through renting properties from landlord, I need to have at least four properties, okay? Four properties generating me 500 pounds every single month, that would have given me 2,000 pounds. And 2,000 pounds, is 300 pounds more than what I would have got to be financially free. So I now know I need four properties, okay? And with those four properties, I never have to work for my employers anymore. Basically, then that money is enough to look, to look after myself. And that way I'll be able to invest all my time doing property. Now, for most people, they will set their target at four properties, right? But what I did is to set myself a target to have at least 17 properties. This sounds crazy, right? 17 properties I set myself to get. I said, look, I need to get 17 properties, okay? When I do the 17 properties, what really motivates me was when I times the 500 pounds by 17 properties. That would have been a nice £8,500. So my eyes was on £8,500 by the end of the year. So I went looking, I went searching, I went educating myself. I went doing so many stuff in order for me to be able to get to where I wanted to be. It was absolutely crazy, unbelievable, looking, looking, educating myself. But I didn't have money at that time, to be honest. Then I approached my landlord. I said, look, I've heard about this deal. I have about, I heard about this strategy where I can rent a property out and subsequently rent it room by room. If I got the property, would you be able to kind of fund it? My landlord was like, what? That, that, that is illegal. You're not allowed to, to sublet properties. Okay, you're not allowed to do that because if you do, you're doing it um, uh, illegally. But I said, look, how about if I can get that and it happens to be legal, would you be able to invest? He reluctantly said yes. For me, that was a good news because he knew in his head that would never happen because he knew that is illegal. You cannot sublet. But I was thinking, okay, he said, Rahim, you go away if you can get a property. Landlord allow you to sublet it. I will invest all the money that is required to get that deal going. Brilliant. I went on again, educating myself, immersing myself because I hated my job so much, I don't want to be there. That was my motivation factor. I hated it because I feel, I feel being scammed. I was told, go to uni, get a degree, become an accountant, then life becomes amazing, only to realize it was a trap. I hated the people I was working with. I never want to go to work. I never want to be there. I just hated it. So that then become my, my motivation factor. I would go and work sometime from 7 in the morning to 6 p.m. every single day, five or six days a week. Come back home, have my dinner. I sat on my laptop working. I did that for six grilling months. Just nothing happened. I continue, 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 continue. But the end of the six months, about the seven months, I was able to close my first deal. And that deal was somewhere in Cardiff, just opposite Principality Stadium. If you know Cardiff, it's just by the riverside, um, just by the city centre, the train station is on the other side. It's this nice Victorian buildings. It was a seven bedroom house and secured it with my landlord. My landlord was goshma. He did not believe I did that. He had to come around, speak to the existing landlord to find out if that is true. He was happy for me to take on the property. And then he asked the, the new landlord, why would you allow someone to take your property and sublet it? He said, look, I'm, I inherited this property. I am a biochemist. I haven't got time to manage this property. I've never rented all the bedrooms. If Rahim can guarantee me the rent, 
why not? Okay, so obviously he was happy. I was happy we signed the contract. My existing landlord then fund the whole deal. That was my first joint venture partner without even realizing it was a joint venture partnership. So when we did that property, when we done everything in the property, within two weeks, that property was rented because it's literally bang on the city center. You cannot go wrong. Bang in the city center. So that property generated us You'll be surprised. That property generated us £3,500. Okay, so when we rent all the bedrooms, that's how much that property generated. So in essence, we were making £1,000 every single month. Okay, obviously, I, I joined venture with my landlord. So he was getting 50% of that. So 50% of that was about 500 pounds. So in essence, he gets 500 pounds and I get 500 pounds. Okay, so that then gives me 500 pounds every month without working to make that money. The only work we did, obviously, is to renovate the property, make it really, really nice, um, decorate it, have furniture in there, but the landlord put all the money in. All I did was the hard work to get it done. Okay, we rented the property. Within two weeks, the property is gone. So now I know I've got that money every single month without doing anything. And guess what? I get addicted to it. It's like, what? 500 pounds every month without doing anything? I love this idea. Then I went for the second one, right? Month seven, third one, month eight. Guess what? Between month eight to month 12, I was on 16 property. I was on 16 property. I was on my 16th property. So in essence, I failed my goal by one single property. I took my income from making 1,700 pounds active income to 8,000 pounds a month in the first 12 months of investing in property without buying a single property as well. So now you may be asking, whoa Raheem, this is all amazing. You make all this money. What steps did you take? The steps I take, first of all, is to separate myself from the negative sayers, the people that said I can do, the people that always spend money, the people that always bitch and complain. And I have a vision board, right? I have my vision board for to having 17 properties a year. I end up having 16 properties. And then from there on, I know I'm financially free, not just financially free to be quite frankly, and I am financially independent. Here's the most important thing I did. So what I did at, at that time, I was on 8,000 pounds a month, okay? After the 12 months. But what I did at that time is what most people would not do. You believe you me or not, at the time I was on that 8,000 pounds a month, I still lived in that shared bedroom. I did not increase my expenses. I did not move to an expensive flat. I did not buy myself an amazing car. I can afford it, right? I did not go on holiday. I stayed exactly the same place I was, shop in the same supermarket, go to the same restaurant, do everything exactly the same way I was when I was on 1,700 pounds. And guess what I did afterwards? When I'm not making that money, I had a deal with my existing landlord. I said, look, things are going well now and, and we are doing okay. Is it okay for me to move in, in the property that, that, that we secured together, right? What my landlord told me, because obviously the property was making 3,500 pounds gross, gross rental income. He said to me, Raheem, as long as I'm making my 500 pounds every single month, you can go and live in that property. In essence, he said he still need to get his 500 pounds. I said, fine. So what I did basically is to look at the bedrooms, right? I realized I was undercharging. What I did basically, because we converted that property into nine bedroom. So what I did basically is to divide the 500 by nine bedroom to see how much I am able to increase the rent by per bedroom. So I knew I would need to increase the rent by 56 pounds per bedroom. So what I do, whenever a tenant move out of my, of my house, I increase the rent by, by 56 pounds. Whenever another tenant move out, I increase the rent by 56 pounds. So when all eight of the tenants move out, rent was increased. And guess what? I was then able to move into that property living 
with my tenant, okay? With zero pound rent. Zhush. Right? So what I did, I was on 8,000 pounds. I did not increase my expense. Guess what I did? I reduced my expense. So I went the opposite the direction. So in essence, I'm making 8K a month with zero expense on light and heat and rent. The only expense I was making was this 400 pounds every single month. Okay, so I did the opposite of what lots of people would have done. Most people got 8,000 pounds. Whoa, I'm gonna go and get the most expensive flat, get an expensive car. No, I did the opposite. So, what I then did basically, I started to save that money. Okay, I saved that money for 12 months. That then gives me, it gives me 96,000 pounds. So, with that 96,000 pounds, I then started to buying my own real estate properties. I start buying my own properties. First year, I was able to buy three properties. So I renovate all these properties and then guess what? I remortgage them, rent them out. Right, rent all these properties out, okay? Rent them all out, remortgage, pull my money out. I go again, buy more of these babies. And then by the time you think about this, I was able to build a million pound property investment portfolio, it continued growing, growing, growing until to where I am today. So why am I sharing this? I'm not sharing this to, to um, brag on you. I'm only sharing this for you to know if you have a vision and a mission and a strong why to why you want to achieve what you set yourself to achieve, no matter what obstacle, no matter what problem you face along the way, because I did. You know, some people being racist to me, some people saying so many stuff to me, but I keep going on, I keep keeping on to get me to where I wanted to be. So once I start making that money, then I start building my own portfolio and I build that to a multi-million pound property investment portfolio. It doesn't go without saying it was hard work, it was resilient, it was persistent, but I took the one first step by one, getting rid of the people that wasn't adding value to me getting rid of the people that was complaining about me all the time getting people that always take talk me down we call them battery drainers that was the first thing and these are the people that believe in me that i thought was was the people i love more than everybody i thought they are the best people around me but when i realized we haven't got the same mission and and the same vision i segregate myself from those people and when i did my life transformed. I was really worried. I'm not going to get people that are going to be like this people, but believe in me, Mel, you'd be surprised what you get the other side of the pond. So it was absolutely amazing. From there on, I was able to do all what I'm doing now. And I'm here with, the, with you today sharing this concept with you. Okay? Not to brag, but to motivate you and encourage you to, and also tell you that if you put your mind to anything you want to do, you reduce your expenses instead of increasing them, there's no way you won't be successful, right? Live below your means, significantly below your means, and you invest the difference. And I still use this exact module I'm sharing with you right now. This concept, I still use it. I still shop in the same restaurant. I still live in a normal house. I still do whatever any normal person will do. And basically, I invest the money to get me richer and richer and richer. If this video has inspired you and you want to follow the blueprint or the roadmap I've used to take me from being a dead broke accountant to a successful property investor, I would like to invite you to book a special strategy call with one of my investors to learn how you could implement strategies like this to take you from where you are to where you want to go. And by the way, if you like this video or any of my videos, smash the like button below, subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing the next one. Thank you.